Good morning. Grace and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Main Street United Methodist Church. If you're a first time guest, please let one of our ushers or greeters know, and they'll see that you receive a complimentary coffee mug uh, to take home with you today. Um, I do have a couple of announcements to you. I just want to keep the announcements to a minimum, but uh, the worship uh, planning team will be meeting Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the library, and at 4.45, if you're interested in singing at English Meadows, uh, the, you should meet here at 4.45 and uh, then go over to English Meadows. Um, the strategic planning team is meeting after worship today in room 201. Messy Church is next Saturday from 5 to 7. And of course, there'll be the packing party for the Christmas baskets next Sunday morning, followed by the cantata. Are there any other announcements? If not, then I invite you to rise and read what there is. I'm sorry. Good morning. Like the old Bing Crosby tune, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. With the parade, which by the way, we made a picture in the Bedford paper, we hit the big time. The snow, the beautiful decorations, the cantata next Sunday that we're all looking forward to. Yes, it is beginning to look like Christmas. Would you please stand as you are able for the call to worship? Praise be to the Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth. The Lord our God is victorious, and no power can stand against God. 
God speaks and the universe trembles, for the word of God stands forever. Blessed are God's people, all who serve Christ. Christ, who offers, offers eternal life that all might dwell with God forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, in this Advent time of waiting, you draw us into the wilderness where we are faced with the truth about ourselves. You lead us to reflect upon the darkness in our lives and in the world, to confess our sin, and with humble and contrite spirits to receive your gracious forgiveness. Only then are our hearts made ready for the indwelling of the purity of the Spirit of Christ and the passion of the love of Christ. Enable us to make a true repentance and let our worship be an act of praise and gratitude for the good news of your mercy. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise is number 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. <laughs>
invite you to pray with me now our congregational prayer. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, we are so frail in time and space, yet you love us and desire to give us eternity. Only you, Lord, created the universe, and only you, Lord, are worthy of praise. In Christ we pray. Today we light two candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace. The light of the second candle reminds us that God's purpose in sending his son into the world was to bring peace. We look at the division, the fighting, and the turmoil around us, and we see a world in dire need. We remind ourselves that peace begins with forgiveness, and that forgiveness begins in our hearts. Gracious God, we thank you for your, your promise of peace, and we know that because of Christ, peace is possible. We pray today for, for the nations of the world that we could find a way to get, live together in peace. Pray for our brothers and sisters everywhere that we could become, become more forgiving, more understanding, and more loving to one another. Flood our hearts with the light of peace today so that we might take the light and spread your love to the whole world. Amen. children to come up. Gotta find room for everybody. Okay, so today we're talking about sheep, and I bet you guys know a lot of things about sheep. So, like my little sample here. Now, sheep have a fluffy coat of fleece that cover their covers their body. What do we call that stuff? 
Whoa, good job. Now, sheep live in a group with other sheep. What do you call a whole bunch of sheep together? School. A school, not quite. That's another one. A herd, almost. A flock, good, a flock. Now, what do you call a baby sheep? A lamb. A lamb, that's right. See, they're good. What do sheep eat? Do you know, Maggie? Grass. Grass. Hay, grass and hay, yes, good. Now, what do you call the person who takes care of the sheep? Shepherd. Shepherd, good, they all knew that one, very good. So you guys know pretty much about sheep, don't you? Well, there are a couple things you might not know about sheep. Sheep can't take care of themselves. They can't find their food. They can't take care, protect themselves. If there were wild animals coming for them, they'd have to have somebody to protect them from that. They don't know when to come in out of the rain. So they have to have a person to take care of them. So we call them the shepherd. Now in the Bible, you hear a lot about the shepherd and the sheep. When they're talking about shepherds and sheep in the Bible, who do you think the sheep are? Well, let's start on the other end. Who do you think the shepherd would be? Who's our shepherd? Yes, the person who takes care of them. Who, who Maggie? The shepherd takes care of them, that's right. But who is the, who is the great shepherd? Is that a sheep, that's right. <laughs> so who's the great shepherd? Hey, help them out. God and Jesus, that's right. And so who do you think the sheep are? If he's the shepherd, who's the sheep? We are, that's right. We're the sheep. Isn't that cool? We are like sheep. We don't always know what to do. Huh? Well, sometimes there are things we need some help with. So you might need to help have talk to God or Jesus about helping. Yeah, your sister and your dad take care of you, too. That's right. Well, when you're scared of something, hmm? mommy takes you? Yeah, good. Okay, they divide and conquer in their family. Oh, daddy, too. Okay. Well, sometimes if you're scared, you can talk to the great shepherd, and he can take care of you and protect you and help you through that and things like that. So remember... Um, in Isaiah, I have to read this because I'm sure I'll mess it up. In Isaiah, he talks about the great shepherd, and he says, He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. So remember that. Whenever you're scared or whenever you've got a problem you've got to solve or anything like that, you have a shepherd that can help take care of you. He's always watching over us. Okay, let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending a shepherd to take care of us when we don't know what to do. We thank you for all his love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. it's true what they say 90% of the time in a children's moment the answer is Jesus if the question's asked <laughs> please join me now in our prayer for illumination Lord open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed we may hear with joy what you say to us today Amen our epistle lesson is from 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. Peter is a letter that speaks to a church that is waiting for deliverance, a church that is growing frustrated with the promised return of their Lord. The writer pleads with the church to keep faith and be patient as they wait for their salvation to be fully accomplished. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, 
And then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him in peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Our gospel lesson is from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. John the baptizer, preaching in the wilderness, proclaims good news as the gospel of Mark begins the story of the advent of Jesus. John's good news involves a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins to prepare for the advent of the Messiah. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his, straight, his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Our Psalter lesson is found on page 806 in your hymnal. It is Psalm 85, verses 1 and 2, and verses 8 through 13. Please stand as you are able. showed favor to your land and restored the fortunes of Jacob. Now to verse 8, let me hear what God will speak, for the Lord will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, and those who turn to the Lord in their hearts. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord, and make the is number 882, the ecumenical version of the Apostles' Creed. Let us join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, 
is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. it is four times a year we celebrate what good things have been going on in our church and I think it's great to reflect back on how busy our church has been and how many lives they've impacted so this is our celebration moment this month slide two the youth prayer breakfast we got the kids started off right by having a youth prayer breakfast um, at the very beginning of school they meet once a month with St. John's uh, Episcopal Youth, and they get together and they eat and they pray together, and it's a great way for them to start their day. The next one is the Youth Potato Bar Fundraiser. They had a potato bar and are raising money to, for their mission trips. I know last summer they did missions around Bedford with Bedrock, and they worked on people's homes, they did landscaping, they did all kinds of things. The year before they went to Philadelphia and witnessed to people. So we don't know what exciting thing they're going to do this year, but it sure is fun to, to eat their food and give money to such a great cause. The next one is the uh, United Methodist Men Cooking Again for the Youth. It's great that our United Methodist Men go over there once a month and do that. United Methodist Men are a busy group, and boy, is that fun to see because they had just about died out, and they are one ambitious group of men. Uh, in the summer, or not the summer, in the fall, they had the fish and chicken dinner, and uh, money raised from that went to the backpack program, which is such a great thing, and uh, you can see everybody had fun there. The next thing project they did is they worked on someone's house, and uh, they had uh, helped insulate it and put siding on the house and renovated the home. And this, it's pr really amazing because a lot of the guys are over 65 and they were up on ladders and doing all that great service. So what a blessing that was to the recipient. They also had a pancake breakfast and they raised money for hung hunters for the hungry. So they have a... a something that they're always saving money for and they're always giving back to the community. The next one is a church picnic and of course they cooked food for us, the United Methodist men did at the church picnic, but the church picnic was a great time for people to invite a friend to come and uh, for us to get to know each other better. Next was Centerfest and that was really a tremendous way to reach out to the community. We had kids there all day and we had the perfect location because we were right in front of us were the firemen and uh, the fire trucks and the policemen. And we had kids starting the minute we blew those blow ups up until the very end. So we touched a lot of people. We handed out forms for Messy Church to reach out to people in the community. We invited them to be part of our, um, our outdoor group and uh, it was just a fantastic way to reach to the community. Next kids club, Naomi comes to visit. I don't know if you recognize who Naomi is up there. I think it's somebody that's up in the choir. Um, she, she was uh, teaching them about Naomi and then you see Johnson, he is teaching the kids how to do drumming on buckets and boy, they love that. So uh, they're gonna perform for us in January, right Johnson? Okay, so that'll be fun to see. All right, next, the Kids Club went, to the, and they meet every Wednesday. 
Um, but they went to the Elks home and decorated two of the 52 trees that are up at the Elks home. And you can see that's one of the trees they decorated and they had a blast um, doing that and giving back to our community. And it's fun for the residents to see young people come and know that they're from our church. Next was the staff appreciation luncheon, which I know they really, really enjoyed. And um, I think it's good for people to say, hey, what are you guys doing here? When we meet out in the community like that, people like to know where you're from and why you're there. And uh, it's really a good representation. A lot of our groups actually have meetings out in the community and restaurants. And it gets people talking. I had somebody ask me the other day, what church are you from? And I said, Main Street United Methodist Church. And they said, oh my gosh, that place has some things going on. And that really makes you feel good. Um, next is the Joy Group, which stands for Just Older Youth. The first time was just to get together at Bella's and uh, we uh, just shared food and shared ideas of what we were going to do. They met last week and they made mugs for Alcoholics Anonymous group that meets in our church. And they'll be given out Monday and it's going to have hot chocolate and marshmallows and cookies and all kinds of things. And we told them that we love them and we're going to pray for them. So in your prayers, include them in your prayers because they meet in our church and they could use, use our help. Next, the Joy went to a movie called Let There Be Light. It was a Christian movie, and anybody was invited, and the people that went had a really good time. Outdoor Adventure went on a hike. They went up to Fall, uh, Falling Creek Cascades on a great October afternoon, and they've got more events coming up. We have three Bible studies going on. One is the shack that Jim Smith leads. The disciple group meets with uh, Paul. And we have one that Millie leads, so we hope to have pictures of them next time. Next is um, the Meet Neat groups. We have four of those. We have 11 small groups or growth groups right now, which is amazing. And uh, this is just one of them. We hope we get pictures, right, Martha, of your group? And Melva, you've got a group with Carolyn. We hope to get pictures from your group and Glennis next time. Messy church. This is really fun, and if you haven't come next Saturday, come at 5 o'clock and, and help us out. Um, we've got two slides here of Messy Church. We've met twice, once in October and once in November. What a great way to reach out to the community and let them know that, okay, that um, we are here. They, have, they feed, feed the soul, the body with food and the mind, and they also do creative crafts. So it's just a really good time by all. And we encourage church members to show up so that it's not just new people that come, that they see all of us involved. Okay, the next one is a vitality group is taking uh, cookies uh, because we care to the sheriff's department and the police department. They love getting cookies from us, and I know that uh, Martha's Meet Neat groups doing cookies for Otter River Elementary. Make sure you take a picture when you deliver them. And uh, it's a great way to reach out to the community, let them know we care and that we're praying for them. Um, we let the policemen know that we really are behind them and we appreciate their service and what they do for our community. And uh, Sheriff Brown gave us, uh, they passed out bumper stickers to us that was on that billboard that says, we stand for the flag, we kneel to pray. So that was really fun to go out and see them. Uh, communion out in the lawn, that was interesting and I think it was good to have it in a different place because it makes you all stop and think more about communion than just getting in the same routine. And I think it's great if people drove by and saw us out there um, that shows that we're out in the community. October was prayer walk month we had lots of people doing prayer walks. Some of the people that did it were Sunday school classes, meet and eats, joy group, vitality. Several individuals did it. Just a couple people went in their neighborhood. Um, we had a map out there, and we're going to do this again in April. So we hope that you join us because it looks awesome for us to be out in the community, and God appreciates us praying for the people in the community. A lot of the people that go on the prayer walks actually know the people that live in those houses. We don't knock on doors. We just stand out on the sidewalk and pray for them. And I know the, one of the first prayer walks we did, we went to Rosalind's house. I don't know if she's here today. There she is. 
And she came out to greet us, and she was so happy that we were there praying for Tommy. And uh, it really touches people. Um, Halloween party. This was another great way to reach out in the community. We had a great crowd. Um, we had all kinds of games set up, and we had hot dogs, so it was a tremendous time. Peanut butter drive uh, is a great way we reach out in the community, collect peanut butter for the backpacks. They stuff those in once a month. They still are collecting jars, so anytime you want to bring them in, they would love to have them. And the last one is the Mana Cafe that's been in the month of December for the Christmas baskets. We've had a great outpouring of love with money so that we can take those out into the community. And next Sunday, we're packing baskets, so we'd love to have you come down in the fellowship hall and join us. And we need lots of people to help deliver. But we're making 55 baskets for um, families in Bedford, and then another 15 or 20 are being made for the hospice group. So please come join us. This is one of the biggest events we do to reach out to our community. Um, so thank you, and I want to let you know that we are changing lives. Every time we step out in that community and do things, people know that it's Main Street out there, reaching their arms out, opening up, and giving everybody a lot of love. So keep it up. If you are in a group, please take pictures so we can get you in the next celebration moment. Thank you. We hear a voice that calls, prepare, the coming of the Lord is near. With our gifts, we praise God whose advent overcomes the darkness of our night. I invite our ushers and acolyte to come forward for our morning offering.
God, bless our offering today and bless us as well in our giving. This we pray in your holy name. Amen. In preparation is number 220, angels from the realms of glory. <laughs> lesson is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Hear then the word of God. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. Grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. My former district superintendent, Brooke Wilson, 
told about a man who worked for the post office. The man's job was to process all the mail that had illegible addresses. One day a letter came to his desk addressed in shaky handwriting to God. He thought he should open it to see what it was all about. He opened it and read these words. Dear God, I am a 93-year-old widow living on a very small pension. Yesterday, someone stole my purse. I had $100 in it, which was all the money I had until my next pension check. Next Sunday is Christmas, and I had invited two of my friends over for dinner. Without that money, I have nothing to buy food with. I have no family to turn to, and you are my only hope. Can you please help me? Sincerely, Edna. The postal worker was, was touched. He showed the letter to his fellow workers. Each of them dug into their wallets and came up with a few dollars. And by the time they had made the rounds, he had collected $96, which he put into an envelope and sent to the woman. The rest of the day, all of the workers felt a warm glow for the kind thing they had done. Christmas came and went. Two days later, another letter came from the old lady addressed to God. All the workers gathered around while the letter was open. It read, Dear God, how can I ever thank you enough for what you did for me? Because of your gift of love, I was able to fix a glorious dinner for my friends. We had a very nice day, and I told my friends of your wonderful, wonderful gift. By the way, there was four dollars missing. I think it must have been those thieves at the post office. <laughs> Signed, Edna. Well, the folks at the post office tried to help. Helping people is what life is all about, isn't it? Which brings us to one of the most beautiful passages in the scriptures from Isaiah 40, which I just read. What wonderful words for this second Sunday of Advent. Comfort my people. What was the occasion of Isaiah's letter of comfort to the Israelites? In 587 BC, the city of Jerusalem, the temple, and the Jewish armies had all been destroyed by the Babylonians. 10,000 of Israel's best citizens were marched off to Babylon in which is now modern day Iraq. Many of those left behind were imprisoned. In the course of time, the exiles to Babylon married, built homes, had children, and settled into their new land. They might as well accept Babylon as their new home. The prophet Jeremiah told them they would be there for 70 years. So they did the best they could in their new surroundings. Still, they were away from home and from the temple, away from everything that gave them their sense of identity. These were years of longing and mourning for what had been. To make it even worse, the prophets made it unmistakably clear to the people that the destruction of Jerusalem and the exile to Babylon were not due to Babylonian strength. They were instead a well-deserved punishment from God for the wickedness of the Hebrew people. It is in that context that Isaiah comes to the scene with the much welcomed message. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service has been completed and her sin has been paid for. Undoubtedly, many of you will be exposed in the next few weeks in one form or another to the music of Messiah. Perhaps you know the history of this splendid piece of music. In the summer of 1741, over the course of only 24 days, George Frederick Handel composed the music for Messiah. Their lyrics, however, a combination of scripture texts from the King James Version of the Bible and the Book of Common Prayer were compiled by Charles Jennings. Here's what's important to us. 
The first words sung in Messiah are taken directly from this passage of scripture. The tenor soloist sets the mood. He sings, and I'm not going to even try. Comfort ye people, comfort ye people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. That was great news to the Jewish people, who at this point in time were feeling God forsaken. God has not forsaken them at all, Isaiah says to them. God has forgiven their sins. God has not forsaken them. He has reclaimed them as his own people. What good news that was for them. And what good news for all those who seek to be God's people today. Argentine evangelist Louis Palou tells about a woman named Maria Benitez Perez who confronted him one day. Maria had made an appointment under false pretenses claiming she wanted to interview for a job. But as soon as she entered his office, Maria made her intent clear. She was the secretary to the Communist Party in Ecuador. She denounced everything having to do with God or with Jesus Christ, and her bitterness just overwhelmed him. But Palou listened respectfully and replied gently to everything Maria said. Soon, as he listened patiently with much love and concern, Maria began telling him her life story. It was a tale of pain and suffering and sin. And she ended it all with one question. Supposing there is a God, she asked, would he accept a woman like me? Palau did not hesitate. He turned to his Bible to Hebrews 10, 17 and read, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Maria tried to explain again all the sins she had committed, and Palau countered again with Hebrews 10, 17. Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Seventeen times Maria tried to explain why she was unworthy to receive forgiveness, and seventeen times Louis, Louis Palau repeated these same words. Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And finally, Maria Benitez Perez, the secretary to the Communist Party in Ecuador, bowed her head and gave her life to Jesus Christ. She was comforted by the words from Hebrews just as the people of Israel were comforted by the words of the prophet Isaiah. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for. Of course, this joyous message is not just for Maria and for the people of Israel. It is for all who have fallen short of the glory of God. That means it's a joyous message for all of us. Pastor Leith Anderson tells about a memorable experience from his teenage years. It was a Sunday afternoon. His father had purchased a magnificent new red Chevrolet convertible. Leith himself had a humble little Volkswagen Beetle. One day his dad let Leith drive his new red Chevrolet convertible to a friend's house. Leith took a back way down the twisting, rock-lined mountain road. The speed limit was 45 miles per hour on this road, but a friend told Leith that it was impossible to maintain 45 miles per hour on that road and stay in the right lane. Leith knew he could do it. He was wrong. His friend was right. Going around a curve, he crossed the line just when another car was coming up the mountain. Leith took out the side of that car from headlight to taillight. Just as bad, he smashed up the front of his father's car so bad it couldn't be driven. The police came. Leith called home. His father came immediately. 
ironically in the Volkswagen. He told Leith to go on to his friend's house in the VW, and he would deal with the police and the car. Now I get ready for the rest of the story. Leith Anderson says his father never mentioned the accident to him again. Years later, Leith found out that his father's insurance rate rates doubled for the next three years because of the accident, but his father never asked him for any money. He never told him the cost. Leith was grateful. In fact, he says to this day he is still grateful. This event had an enormous impact on <coughs> Leith, Leith Anderson. We've all been there, haven't we? Maybe we haven't wrecked our dad's new car, but all of us have sinned. All of us need forgiveness. There's someone in this room today for whom the greatest comfort I could give you is to utter these three words. You are forgiven. These are God's words to you this morning, regardless of your past. You are forgiven. But please note this. God didn't forgive Israel because they deserved to be forgiven or because he regarded their offenses lightly. God forgave them simply because he loved them. The same thing could be said about Leith Anderson's dad. He was probably quite attached to his red convertible. There was probably a part of him that wanted to give his son the thrashing of his life. But what would be gained? He knew his son felt bad enough as it was. At that moment, he knew his son's greatest need would be, was to be reassured of his father's love. When a parent gives love like that, they are reflecting the true nature of God. That's why it's appropriate that we give gifts at Christmas time. They are a material way of expressing our love. And of course, that is the meaning of Christmas. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And that is why we exchange gifts with one another. Christ came to us not because we deserve it, nor because he approves of everything we are or have done. He came because of his Father's great love for us. Take a few moments this Christmas to listen again to the opening lines of Handel's Messiah. Listen as the tenor sets the mood. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. Then continue to listen as he sings the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Then listen as he moves into a brief area. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill made low, the crooked straight and the rough places a plain. Then you will hear the entire choir break into that glorious refrain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. What good news. What good news to all those who have ever needed to be forgiven. I believe, friends, that's good news for you and for me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue our worship with a time of prayer, a time of joining together to offer up the yearnings of our heart. And so I ask you, who are those people that you would lift up on this day? Jackie. Yes. Jackie is in a step-down unit. He still cannot talk to you, uh, but uh, being moved out of the ICU is, uh, gives us hope. Are there others? Yes, thank you. Yes. 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 
Also been asked to lift up to you that uh, Judy Hughes's mother is in the hospital. Nina, uh, she had fallen some time back, and I don't know if this is related to that or not. But uh, keep uh, Judy and her family in your prayers. Are there others? <coughs> then let us go to God in prayer, and let us use a time of silence as pre as preparing ourselves to be in the presence of God. Let us pray. Loving God, we, your children, come to you basking in the forgiveness that you have poured out into our lives and our world. We come giving thanksgiving and praise as we experience that love and your presence and support in our lives. We come with thanksgiving and praise for the uh, extended family, our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we come as intercessors. We come offering up the prayers of our heart on this day, asking that you pour out that Holy Spirit, that magnificent power of, of healing, of comfort, of assurance of love. And so Lord, through our unity and faith of, in Jesus Christ, we offer up to you the yearnings of our heart on this day. And we conclude praying the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This coming Saturday is uh, Messy Church again, and I invite you to uh, put that on your calendar and, and find those people in your circle of acquaintances that might not come with you on Sunday morning, but would come to a, a, a more informal environment. And I also tell you, you'll hear the Christmas story uh, with the M&Ms. And if you want to hear the story, you're going to have to come to hear it. But that's our discipleship, to go and tell the story and to share that love and forgiveness that God has bestowed upon us. Our closing hymn this morning is Heralds of Christ, number 567. If you would stand as you're able.
May the blessing of God, the creator and savior of humankind, be upon us with peace and with promise. Amen. Amen.